I was just thinking about what if there is a blue wave? And what if what if that blue wave results in people pandering to the far left? You know, what happens? I think about the whole equity thing versus equality. And I think about how... I don't know, man. There, there, were, there have been some discussions I've had with people on Twitter and YouTube and some other places where I basically get told that If I'm not able to just automatically empathize with dozens of group identities, that I'm essentially a psychopath. If I want to use the golden rule, treat people the way you wish to be treated, you know, that that's not good enough, and that it's apparently not any sort of burden to think about dozens, if not hundreds, of different identities of people. No, that's not a burden, apparently. Not a burden at all. If it's a burden, then you must be a psychopath. That kind of upsets me. You know, I did spend most of my life up until August 13th, 2013 at 8.50 p.m. I did spend most of my life creating lists of things not to do around people instead of just using the golden rule. And it was on August 13th that I finally realized, shit, I've been really making it hard on myself. But according to this new secular religion, I should go back to that. And that is not a burden. And if I can't tell the difference between, you know, a burden in that regard and empathy, that, well, I'm apparently a psychopath. Sorry, I'm repeating myself, but it upsets me. So I, uh, I also think about, you know, when it comes to if there's a blue wave, how we're supposed to promote equity rather than equality. Promote the idea of discriminating against the majority demographic in order to make things equitable for systemically oppressed groups. And if I don't support that, well then I'm a terrible person. You know, the... the things I've been fighting for for 30 years, I, I shouldn't care about that. You know, that's not... That's not what's important, because there are groups that have been systemically oppressed. I should be okay with there being quotas. 
Now I've had conversations with people saying, well, no, we're, we're not supporting quotas. I'm like, well, yeah, you are. If you think there should be some sort of demographical equalization, the only way to implement that is through quotas, through discrimination. And of course, people will say, well, that's not discrimination, that's equity. And like I said in the ACA5 video, I mean, I, I, I used the example of uh, the movie Logan's Run where someone says, well, I've never killed anyone in my life. Sandmen terminate runners. Well, so as long as you're able to categorize it differently, that changes what it actually does, right? I mean, I would think that some of these different groups would be upset at people treating them as if they're incapable without, without these quotas. And you can say, well, some groups would be discriminated against uh, no matter what unless there's these quotas you know and since we can't we can't guarantee the stop of this discrimination then this is the only way and i'm like well no there's plenty of other ways We can certainly increase the penalties for if people are caught discriminating against people, you know? Most people argue for equality. Most people do. You know, times have changed. You generally don't find people arguing that, uh, We should give white people special privileges. I, I don't I don't hear anyone actually arguing for that. Even even the white supremacists, who are blatant white supremacists, I don't see them arguing for that. So it's just weird. And then there's so many people that will be saying, oh, well, we're not arguing to actually abolish the police. We just want to uh, move some of their funding over to uh, helps for, you know, help for different communities. And I'm like, do you know that that help is going to work? Do you, do you have any idea whether that's actually going to help? Do you really think taking away funding from the police is going to actually help any of these problems? Do you think taking away funding from the police will make them less violent? Now, I certainly don't argue for, you know, a lot of the things that have traditionally been right-wing values. I certainly don't think we should be combining church and state. I don't think we should be trying to insert religion into places it doesn't belong. You know, religion should remain, you know, in churches. It shouldn't be in legislation. But I feel the same way about secular religions. You know, I don't care whether you learned whatever it is at a university. If it's, if it's got the dogma, if it's got the trappings of a religion, I, I don't think that should be inserted into the government.
But apparently I should be apathetic towards the majority demographic because, oh, well, they're, they're privileged, so I shouldn't care about them. And that's just a weird mindset to me. I'm told that I need to be empathetic and memorize all these different things about different group identities. But if I think about straight white guys, I don't know, that, that's somehow bad. You know, I'm a gay man. You know, there's a number of things I can't directly relate with when it comes to straight white guys. I don't know. As I've said before, you know, we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. We can either support people that essentially want to combine actual, you know, biblical church and state, or we can support people who want to combine a secular church and state. Not really church, but a secular belief and state. The whole thing's messed up. I really don't know what to think anymore. I just know apparently I'm supposed to have apathy towards the majority demographic. Complete apathy. Because if I'm empathetic towards that group, that means I'm apathetic towards other groups. Or it means I'm a psychopath. Don't really know how that's supposed to work. I guess I'm rambling, so thanks for watching.